Hello, bonjour, namaste. Welcome to the Canada and India show, where we meet the people that make up the vibrant Canada-India relationship. Every week, we interview leaders in their fields to dive into who they are and what drives them. From the arts, to trade, to human rights, we will discover together how rich and diverse this relationship really is. Hi, I'm Annie Dubé, Canada's Consul General in Mumbai, India. And you are listening to the Canada in India show. Thank you for joining us. I'm thrilled to have with us today Marco Hahn. He's popularly known for his tenure as the 12th Commissioner of the Canadian Football League and his work with NBA around the world. Mark is currently the chair of the Juno Award and is with Toronto Global and Invest in Canada. He's also an active partner in the rapidly growing Georgian Bay Spirit Company. Tune in to explore Mark's amazing connect with India and all about the Canadian swagger. Okay, so we're on the Canada in India show and I'm very excited to have Mark Cohan here. And I heard that you're involved in a lot of businesses, but before we get on to that, it's your first time in India. You are on the board of Invest in Canada and you're the chairman of Toronto Global. What brought you to India? Um, well, obviously, the opportunity to talk to people about bringing their businesses to Canada. In my career, I've traveled and worked in almost 60 different countries, but India was never one of them. So I'm 53 years old and I can't believe it's taken me 53 years to get here, but it's awesome. I'm going to bring my family back soon. Oh, fantastic. So you have to visit a lot of places in India. It's incredible India. So I'm sure you'll have a lot of opportunities for your family to enjoy the country. Uh, apparently, I was with Sri Ram He from the ICIC Bank. He's a friend. You know, I put him on the board of Toronto Global, which I chair. And he said, there's this amazing you know, train ride that I should be doing with my family. Something It's almost like a cruise ship on a train. So I'm like, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to Bangalore and now you're in Mumbai. Yeah. Uh, we are discussing on the margin of the ninth edition of the Canada India Mumbai Business Forum. This is organized by the Canada Indian Business Council and Invest in Canada is partnering with uh, CIBC. So tell me, where do you see most opportunity in, um, in the work in pursuing the Invest in Canada mandate that you have and the Toronto Global mandate? It's interesting. As you, as you said, I was in Bangalore before this. If I think about what's going on in Canada, this revolution in tech, uh, you know, I'm from Toronto, but you know, the, the explosion of our ecosystem there, 400,000 people working in the tech sector, you know, more jobs created in the Toronto region last year than both New York and San Francisco combined. So people really don't under, know that. And as Canadians, we do a really crappy job of promoting ourselves. <laughs> Hands the podcast. Uh, yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> so I believe... You know, I used to be the commissioner of the Canadian Football League, and I spent a lot of time across Canada. And, you know, I coined this phrase, and I haven't done anything with it, but called Canadian swagger. Um, oh. you know, I think we need to be a little bit more confident, uh, but humble at the same time. Think of, you know, Bianca Andreescu, who just won, you know, the U.S. Yes. Open, where she was so excited, but at the same time, she said sorry. <laughs> you know, that was <laughs> like, true. that was Canadian so swagger. So Canadian, <laughs> the way we win, where I'm so sorry for yes. your loss. But, um, you know, I think we need to do a better job of promoting ourselves and really telling our story. You know, if I talk to people in India, they, they've been thinking more about America, you know, mm -hmm. the United States. But yes. we have this unbelievable opportunity now where Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, with artificial intelligence, with company, because of our open immigration policy, people are flocking in. Now, I'd say in the last 18 months, all of a sudden, Indian businesses, you know, some have been around for a long time, Tata and, and Tech Mahindra and those things have, have, have focused. But really, I'd say more of the medium-sized companies and SMEs are really starting to look at as Canada as the sort of the entry point to the North American market. And let's add uh, to your list of cities, the Edmonton, Calgary uh, groupings, because a lot of Indian companies are really successful in the region and uh, through Saskatchewan and Manitoba as well. And uh, I know Tech Mahindra is doing something in Moncton, you know, yeah, uh, exactly. so, so there are, you know, there are all over the country. Yes. And one, one small startup even heard, uh, was in Prince Edward uh, PEI as yes. well. I don't know the name of them, but so they're really focused all across Canada. Uh, in fact, through the startup visa program, we have some entrepreneurs establishing themselves in Charlottetown PEI in the next few months. So this is very exciting to see how the relationship is not only based on the usual we send good uh, through cargo, but rather the people. The relationship is definitely based on the people and the exchanges and through education as well. And so we are very fascinated to see how the relationship will grow next. From your end, when it comes to investing in Canada and Toronto Global? 
because I, I need to get back to you at one point. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most important or which sector do you want to focus on? I think for us, it depends what, what country. So my fellow board member here is here and he's from Saskatchewan. So obviously he's focused on the agribusiness and he's an expert in that world largest producer of, of uh, lentils in the world and proteins. Um, for us it's, and for myself, it's probably more on the tech side, uh, but also life, if I think about Toronto and some of the burgeoning things in Toronto as well, life sciences is very important. Uh, clean energy is another huge mandate of both the federal government as well. You know, And it's a challenge for all of us. So I think Financial services, you know, the fact that in a place like Toronto is the second largest financial capital in North America, there's a lot of that back and forth that I think can help. And if you look at, you know, some of these Indian companies, like we are so behind in Canada in terms of digital payment systems, all those type of things. We can, there's so much we can learn from being here. So obviously there's a lot of scope for increasing the relationship back and forth. I want to move, however, to more of your personal experience sure. in uh, first time in India. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's surprising for everybody who come. There's always something that was unexpected. What was it for you? Uh, for me, no. As I said, I've been to about 60 countries around the world. I, I lived for a month in Sumatra. I've seen, I'd say for me, it is uh, how the traffic flows <laughs> with no lines <laughs> But all of a sudden, like people just, they figure out how to make it work. The other day I was in Bangalore at the, and I was walking, I left the, the conference, the tech summit, and I walked back to the hotel and some police officers were, were watching me and they stopped part of the traffic for me to go. And then I was in the middle of the island and they're like, you're on your own after that. <laughs> and I just watched a few people, the locals, and they just jumped into traffic and I just like, okay, I'm following you. you I, I think the Canadian like government this. wasn't happy with me or something. <laughs> but it was, it was like, I just went, I weaved in between the traffic in between the motorcycles and that and made it. And that's, I think for me, that was, uh, I mean, I love Indian food, so that wasn't a shock that food is amazing here. It was, I would say, more to be the how the traffic system works. But it doesn't work and works at the same time. <laughs> it's organized chaos. Yes. Just for your own information, did you know there's 530 cars per kilometer here in Mumbai? I, That's the density of the traffic. I, did, I didn't know that. And what was fascinating, you know, back home in Canada, we say, how far? They say, it was five kilometers, 10 kilometers. They say, no, it's how long. Yeah, you know, the, it's uh, how long does it take? You might be five kilometers, but it'll take you an hour to get there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you said you were a commissioner of football league. Yes. In which life was that? Oh, so and how did you get in, to do in that? most of my life? So you know, my career really started with sports. So in the early '90s, I started my career. I actually. I'll step back. My love has always been wildlife. So I was a zookeeper at the Toronto Zoo for two summer jobs when I was 16 and 17 years old. And then when I graduated from university, I had this idea about starting a charity in Canada called Youth Challenge International. And the first one was an expedition in the Arctic that I led. 15 Soviets. It was in 1990s. It was still Soviets. It wasn't Russians. Uh, (laughs) Six weeks in Siberia and six weeks in the Canadian high Arctic. One of the gentlemen I got to sponsor that expedition when I was gone in the Arctic, he had become the deputy commissioner of Major League Baseball. So I was a young, I was 23 years old. I come back to Toronto. And he's like, Mark, why don't you come work for me? So that launched my career, Major League Baseball. Then I worked at the NBA and I promoted the NBA around the world in the early 90s. If you remember, it was the dream team with Michael Jordan. So it was a fun time. And then I came back to Canada about 17 years ago and I became the commissioner of the Canadian Football League and really worked on that. So I've, sports has been in my blood all my life. And in the last year, uh, you've seen sport at the international level, but from a Canadian perspective, Canadian talent being internationally recognized, it simply boomed. With um, with, uh, you refer to Bianca for the tennis at the U.S. Open, but also the Raptors. The Raptors. I mean, I I, it was amazing. So I I went to three of the final games. You know, I had to mortgage my house to pay for the tickets, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but uh, it was unbelievable and the celebration on the streets. And when you think about You know, it's very interesting. When I worked at the NBA uh, in the mid-90s, it was very difficult to get NBA players to come to Toronto. They thought it was a small little town. They didn't want to be there. They all love Toronto now. So they all want to come live in Toronto, obviously because of Drake and our international artists. If you think of the biggest artists in the world, Drake, The Weeknd, Shawn Mendes, the biggest, you know, talent, and a lot of them live in Toronto. So that attracted NBA players as well. So it was a fun part of my life. <laughs> what do you think uh, we uh, could do better in terms of promoting Canada? Maybe sports diplomacy should be uh, an option on the table. Yeah, but we don't be too diplomatic because we want to win. You know? <laughs> but uh, I just think we just have to do a better job of telling our story. Mm-hmm. You know, 
sometimes I've seen too many videos where it's mountains and lakes and rivers and polar bears. And, you know, that is part of our DNA and it makes our, our country so livable. But we have to start showing the story of tech and life sciences and our financial services and not and those are the type of things if we start telling those stories and our immigration i think you know the imagery of our diversity when i finished my time at the cfl i'm a dual citizen so i was born in, in chicago we moved to canada when i was very little my daughter is a dual citizen my wife is from new york she's doing her Canadian citizen test next week okay uh, she better pass uh -huh. excellent <laughs> so she's asked me all these questions i'm like oh who's on the five dollar bill and the ten dollar <laughs> i know uh so my point being is that i think you know we just have to do a little bit of a better job of selling ourselves and i think that's a big part of what we need to do in terms of our, um, you said we have to be better at tell our story. Uh, and you mentioned tech and mm -hmm. all the, the emerging industries that are we're noticing in the last few years. Canada has invested a lot of money in its super clusters and through the strategic initiative funds. And, and we're really going after talent as well through our immigration programs. So do you see Canada heading with, uh, do you think that these strategies are enough? If not, what else do we need to do? You know, continue to invest. I mean, so I think those strategies are important steps. You know, if there's any red tape that takes a while to bring companies in, you know, how do we remove that red tape and may just make it easier? I mean, one of my board members on Toronto Global, she represents a, one of the largest steel companies in Canada. And she says, when she goes down and do does work in the U.S., you know, all the governors are there and easy. It's not about incentives. They can just turn around a, a contract very easily and get things done. So um, I think we need a little bit of more of that entrepreneurial spirit to say, okay, let's, if there's things in the way that block or just take some time in the bureaucracy, how do we expedite that? I think one of the things, for example, is the global skills strategy. Like that is on a global basis. That's pretty amazing that you could bring your workers in, you know, your, your skilled labor in in two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. Not many countries in the world you can do that. And those are the type of things I think we need to lead in and, we're, and we are. For any Indian investors wanting to establish a presence in Canada, what would be the, your first advice in terms of you want to be successful? This is the one thing you have to do type of thing. I always believe it, it boils down to talent. I'm also an entrepreneur and I invest in, in some small startups and that. I think it always boils down to the people. So making sure that you have people on the ground that you trust, that know the ecosystem and, and that can push your business forward, I think it boils down to people. Will you come back to India? Oh, absolutely. As I mentioned, I definitely, my wife uh, and my daughter is 13. And they were pushing me like, okay, can we come this time? Like my daughter's still in school right now, so no. But, uh, but I'd say the next two years, this is going to be a family trip. Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking your time Thank and you. joining us on the Canada in India show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today for this passionate conversation with Marco Hahn. What a life and a wealth of experience he had to share with us. I look forward to welcoming you next week for an episode with the very dynamic person behind Mumbai's cultural scene, Mr. Asad Lalji, Senior Vice President of SR Group, CEO of Avid Learning, and Curator of the Royal Opera House. We are thrilled that you shared this time with us today. We'd love to hear from you. Connect with us on our social media channels. On Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, we are at Canada in India. You can listen to all our episodes wherever you get your podcasts, so please do subscribe. Thank you. Merci. Danievad.